Have you ever seen one of those movies that just makes you want to burst with emotion? Oh, I'm in a glass case of emotion! Like emotion coming out of your ear holes and your nose and all of the places? That's the kind of movie we're talking about today. I'm Gory B. Movie, I'm a horror addict, and today I'm going to be giving you a bare bones review of Searching. Searching is a 2018 movie starring John Cho, and it's unique because it is told entirely through a laptop screen. It is about a father whose daughter has gone missing. She's a teenage girl, and she's supposedly at a study group, but she never comes home. And the father, desperate for answers, goes into her laptop and starts looking for clues as to what happened to her. Now, Searching is a mystery thriller, so I'm going to be very careful to keep this spoiler free for you so I don't ruin any at the surprises. What I will say right off the bat is that this movie is an emotional roller coaster. I know that's a cliche, but it's entirely true. It opens with a montage that reminded me a lot of the beginning of the movie Up. You know that scene? Yeah, it's pretty much the same in this movie. There's a montage where David Kim, played by Cho and his wife, welcome their daughter into the world. You see her growing up, learning how to play the piano, going to school, spending time with her parents, and then the mother falls ill with cancer. We see them struggle and it's very sad. It's all very, very sad. This brings us to present day. David and Margot are just trying to get by, but there's this gaping hole in their family where the mom used to be and neither of them is really talking about it. David feels that he is growing detached from his daughter, but he, I think, chalks it up to, well, she's a teenager now. She's got a whole bunch of teenage things going on. Despite that, they seem to have a very good relationship. They watch The Voice together. He checks in with her throughout the day. He's very involved with his daughter. One of the things I really liked about Margot and David's relationship is that it felt honest. You can tell that there is definitely a communication problem between the two of them, but there's also a lot of love there. He also gets frustrated with her for the same things that most parents get frustrated with their teenagers over, like forgetting to take out the garbage or when you catch your child lying to you. I also liked how the filmmakers were able to use the laptop top to get us inside David's head. A lot of times when he's texting, especially to his daughter, he will write something out and we'll see exactly how he's feeling. And then he thinks better of it and he deletes it like so many of us do and writes something that he thinks is more appropriate. But that first text that gets deleted really gets us into David's headspace. Well, soon enough, David realizes he has much bigger problems than Margot forgetting to take out the garbage. Margot never comes home from her study group. Then he thinks that she might be camping with friends, but when he finds out that that's not the case, he realizes that she's missing and nobody has any idea where she is. He immediately calls the police and files a missing persons report on Margot. Later, he receives a phone call from a detective, Vic, played by Deborah Messing, and together they start trying to piece together the clues to try and figure out what happened to Margot. Now, the biggest clue Margot left behind was her laptop. And so David uses that to find some leads as to where Margot has gone. He gets into her social media, her email, her bank accounts. But the more he investigates, the more he starts to feel like he didn't really know his daughter at all, that she's a completely different person than the person that he thought he was raising. Now, most of this movie is his investigation and it runs the entire emotional gauntlet. Like I said, there are are obviously parts that are heartbreaking. There are parts where John Cho just makes you feel for him so much. There's a part where he is on the ground crying and it's so hard to watch. On the flip side, there were parts where I laughed out loud. David has a brother, Peter, who is younger and is a bachelor and smokes a lot of pot. And I think it's really funny to see John Cho, the guy who played Harold and Harold and Kumar, one of the biggest stoner comedies there is, lecturing somebody on smoking too much weed. That was hilarious. There is also another part where he's following a lead and he finds out that the person he's questioning's alibi is pretty funny. And this whole part of the movie is done so well. I never felt restricted by the narration tool of the laptop. I felt like the pacing was great. I feel like they dropped just enough clues to keep you invested, to keep you trying to solve this mystery on your own without ever making it too obvious. Interestingly enough, Danny and I called the ending of this one about halfway through, but we were very surprised to find that that was the ending. So I certainly would not call this a predictable 
predictable movie. In fact, I would say that's a testament to the great writing of this film. The clues are there, so if you're paying attention, you can figure this one out. Across the board, I'll say that the acting was great. It's filmed great. It doesn't look cheap. They didn't use the laptop to cover up a low budget. The movie looks fantastic. It is incredibly suspenseful from beginning to end. This is probably the most suspenseful movie I've seen in a really long time. Now, as far as criticisms go, I had to get pretty nitpicky. I will say about the only thing that disappointed me was at the end of the movie, I started to feel the limitations of the laptop narrative. There was so much much more that I wanted to see that wasn't included in the movie. And it's just because with the way the story is being told, it wouldn't have been believable. But I still wanted to see that. I wanted certain payoffs that I didn't necessarily get. And because it felt like there was so much missing, the ending did feel a little rushed. That said, I was very satisfied with the ending. I think it fit the movie well. And I honestly don't know how they could have included more and still continue to tell the story through the laptop. So I think they did the best that they could. That's just one place where I thought that the laptop as a narrative device didn't work as well. The only other complaint I have is John Cho's getting old, okay? He's playing someone's dad now. He's got wrinkles. This is Harold. Harold from Harold and Kumar. He's getting old. He's lecturing people about the pot. It's just kind of bumming me out, dude. Kind of bumming me out and making me feel old too. Not so much a criticism about the movie, but definitely a criticism about life. Stay gold, Harold. Stay gold. And this is a thriller mystery movie, but for me, it was terrifying. This is my worst fear to lose your spouse and have your child go missing. It doesn't get any scarier than that. If you're a parent, this one's gonna hit you where you live and it may be really hard to get through. There's no blood, there's no gore, there's no nudity, but this is an intense movie. And for me, it was almost unbearable at times. Searching is also the best of this type of movie that I've seen. I don't know if you would call it a found footage or a social media movie, but movies like The Den or Unfriended. Of those type of movies where they're told through a laptop or a cell phone, searching is by far the best. So should you see it? Absolutely. I think Searching is one of the best movies I've seen this year. I think especially if you love mysteries, if you love psychological thrillers, if you like crime thrillers, you're going to really enjoy this film. If you're able to, go see this one in the theater. If not, be sure to check it out when it comes out on DVD and Blu-ray December 31st. All right, guys, that's it for me. If you've seen Searching, I would love to hear your thoughts on the movie. Keep it spoiler free and leave it for me in those comments below. And of course, if you guys wanna see more bare bones reviews like this one, where I tell you about the movie, but I don't spoil a thing, be sure to hack that thumbs up button and subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Cut. <laughs>